If it were up to me alone, I would have destroyed your traveler when I had the chance. But there are too many who fear what might thrive without it, and not enough who fear the wars that it seeks out so deliberately. Too much of a good thing will make you sick. Balance can come down to a single grain of sand. My people were born of calamity. Who knows what will awaken when it collapses again? Maybe only then will you understand. You may go. Welcome back, Guardians. Without doubt, the most requested video this week is why the Pyramid ships have appeared in Marisov's throne world. For those new to Destiny, the Pyramid ships appeared in the final cutscene of Destiny 2's Red War campaign. The ships appeared to activate when hit by the shockwave of light produced by the Traveler's Awakening. Apart from the early concept art of five enemy races, with the fifth race thought to be related to these Pyramid ships, little is known about the ships. I made a joke on stream that I wasn't going to cover this topic because there simply wasn't enough information. Funny enough, I found some information whilst researching another lore topic. While we do not have much information to explain what they are or who controls the pyramid ships, I definitely think we can explain why the pyramid ship hologram has appeared in Mara's throne world. I'm going to focus on the significance of the hologram appearing in Mara's throne world for this video. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations are used to pay for the artwork. I do not take anything from the Patreon. The Patreon is to support Gamma Trap. However, if you find the channel entertaining and you would like to support myself, channel memberships are available. Click the join button below or the link in the description for iPhone users to become a member and also see the rewards. This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. The positioning of Mara Solv in her throne world, looking out into the universe, or likely more accurately, the Ascendant Plane, and having the Pyramid Ship's hologram appear, and the dialogue that Mara says to you in this setting, gives a very strong message. This scene tells a story, but only if you can decipher it. If you haven't read Marisov's law book or the Dreaming City law book, this scene in Mara's throne world can be a little bit confusing or harder to understand. So let me try to explain. The first thing that I think is important to understand is Marisov's origin story. Before Mara was awoken, she was a part of Project Amrita. Their mission was to end human dependence on the Traveler. They didn't attack or try to destroy the Traveler. Their mission was much more peaceful. They used Golden Age technology to explore the universe and hopefully colonize new worlds. So Marasov's origins, her history, starts with not wanting to rely upon the Traveler, not wanting to be dependent on the Traveler. The captain of the colony ship clearly represents Project Amrita's separation from humanity and the Traveler when she sends a message to the darkness. The captain broadcasts this message to the darkness in Cosmogyra 3 chapter of the Marasina book. It reads, Whatever's out there, it came for the Traveler. We tell it we're not part of this war. We've seceded from human existence under the Traveler. We demand to be treated as a separate species, not party to baseline humanity's conflicts. In other words, the captain is saying that the Traveler caused this war. The Traveler attracted this unknown force, the darkness. I think this part of Marasov's history is important and accounts for how she perceives the Traveler in the future, i.e. something that attracts enemies and destruction. This way of thinking first originated in Destiny 1, that the Traveler would travel from system to system trying to build armies to fight off its enemies. That the Traveler was never really interested in helping anyone. They only gifted technology to create its own personal army. Have a listen to the Grimoire card called Darkness. It reads, Certain positions, often labelled heretical, imply that the Traveler itself triggered the collapse, or that 
it knew the darkness was coming for it and hoped to use the solar system as a sacrifice or a proxy army. I would argue that this kind of thinking is well ingrained in Tamara's soul and helps to set up how she views the Traveler in the future. Remember that Marasov is not against humanity, she just doesn't like the Traveler. She is in fact the one that led tens of thousands of Awoken back from their original homeland to assist Earth and to assist humanity. The reason why Marasov did not assist Earth originally and remained hidden in the reef is that they encountered the Fallen and all of the other enemies clawing at Earth and the Traveler. And so Mara thought it was too dangerous to immediately help humanity. Mara opted to establish the Awoken in the Reef and the Dreaming City before providing assistance to Earth. Of course, some of the Awoken ignored her commands and left for Earth anyway. Have a listen to Revenge 2 when Mara decides not to assist Earth and remain hidden. It reads, We can't reveal our existence lest the Fallen track us down. We need more information. Our focus must remain on securing this derelict reef, bootstrapping industry and a population, and scouting out the solar system. Upon seeing Earth again and the Traveler, Mara is not impressed with the Traveler's efforts to defend humanity. The Revenge 2 law entry reads, As the crowd murmurs and thrills, Mara feels herself brittle. She doesn't like that thread of reverence. She doesn't like the Traveler looming there, almost but not quietly completely dormant, like a dying heart ripped from its body and thrown into warm water. It ebbs and flutters if you look at it with the right senses. If the Traveler had the power to protect anyone, wouldn't it protect more than one huddled settlement? Mara almost criticizes the Traveler for not defending more people, for not saving more. This likely reaffirms her opinion of the Traveler. It attracts enemies and only saves those who can benefit it. Lastly, Queen Mara Sov does not agree with what the Traveler did to Guardians. The law entry Savin details an Awoken Guardian. So this is one of the Awoken who betrayed the Queen's orders, left for Earth to provide assistance, he was obviously killed and then revived as a guardian by a ghost who had not yet found their guardian since the collapse. Marasov interrogates the Awoken Guardian and realizes that the Guardian has no recollection of his Awoken life. Have a listen. The Awoken Man looked at him, then back at Mara. Your Majesty, he said, bowing. My name is Savin. You do not remember your wives? He did not. You do not remember your child, who is now 110. He did not. The Awoken Guardian does not remember his wives or child. The Queen asks her Techians to assess the difference between the Awoken Guardian, Savin, and what he used to be before, an Awoken man called Chao Mu. They discover he is now greedy and repetitive in nature. It reads, And Savin was most of all greedy not in the grasping manner of the petty, but in an enormous, all-consuming way, for he desired materials and experiences that would temper him into a better guardian. He leapt into space repeatedly and without reason, as if his death were no more traumatic than a hop off a curb. Obsessed with reward and efficiency, he would rather do one profitable thing a thousand times than waste his efforts on a less beneficial novelty. On a side note, I can't help but think that this is the writers having a little bit of fun and making a bit of a joke about the Destiny community and how we like grinding things over and over again to get better gear. But moving along, from this encounter, from seeing how Guardians have lost their memory and are now mindlessly completing tasks, the Queen does not like the Traveller any more than she did before. It reads... By the end of her acquaintance with Savin, Mara had decided she did not like this traveller and what it did to people. Yet, she had also decided that she felt a strange kinship and sympathy for it, this cornered, desperate god making infinite sacrifices out of its people. Perhaps the earth would be better off if the traveller vanished or was destroyed, she thought. Even in the reef, she felt as if she were living next to a torch held up in a dark wilderness calling out across the galaxy to hungry things with too many eyes. 
And this is where we come full circle. We come back to the original philosophy. The traveler attracts enemies, attracts dangers. We would be better off without it. It is a torch in the dark wilderness attracting predators. Now with this knowledge, this scene in Mara's throne world makes sense. We see Mara Sov looking out into the universe and behind her is a hologram of the pyramid ships. She says this. If it were up to me alone, I would have destroyed your traveler when I had the chance. But there are too many who fear what might thrive without it, and not enough who fear the wars that it seeks out so deliberately. Too much of a good thing will make you sick. Balance can come down to a single grain of sand. My people were born of calamity. Who knows what will awaken when it collapses again? Maybe only then will you understand. You may go. Marasov is saying that not only does the Traveler attract enemies, but it seeks them out deliberately. She's saying that these pyramid ships are now coming for us because of the Traveler. These ships are the enemies in the darkness attracted to the torch and that they will cause a second collapse. So the reason for the holograms, the Queen has obviously now detected the pyramid ship threat. Remember that we only know about it because we saw the cutscene, but technically, I don't think anyone else knows about the pyramid ships in the city. This scene basically tells us that the Queen has detected this new threat. The pyramid ships, and they are coming for the Traveler, and coming to cause the second collapse. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Personally, I love how so many small things in-game are combined together to tell a story. It is awesome to see for the lore. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word torch to represent the Traveler as a giant beacon for enemies. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.